Are you by are you by the by the fire? I'm by the fire. I thought it was a radio interview. <laughs> so I'm yeah, like in yeah. ugly clothes, having a having a gin tonic. I mean, uh, I have this farmer's house in Sweden with some friends, and I'm up here enjoying myself around the campfire. Yeah, you, you're looking absolutely comfy. Yeah, this is this is my view. My wife, my friend, my fire. That's that's absolutely amazing. My drink. So it's you're so still Scandinavian. I realize it's so Scandinavian. You're still at Copenhagen. No, I'm in actually I'm close, like two hours out of Copenhagen, where um, yeah. me and my friends we bought a farmer's house deep in the woods, just <laughs> to do that's something that's really that's nice. Very, very something very far away from the techno scene. You know, you need some yin and some yang, right? Yeah, you you kind of need to get away from raving a little bit from yeah. time to time. Well, you're you're about to be far from home, my guy. Welcome to yes. Argentina. I'm Julian. It's Thank really you. nice to have you here. I, I see you're you're really enjoying yourself. So I'm, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that to get the best out of you. Let's hope so. Uh, you, you're on Who Made Who with Jeppe Kilbig and Thomas Bafut. That's the truth. At the time of recording, you're three days away for playing in Argentina. It's called Savage Crew at Mandarin Park, February the 18th at 11 p.m. You're playing with Guy Gerber and Gluck. Oh, yes. I'm just hoping and praying that you're not absolutely done with pandemic related questions but in all fairness it's a sign of the time you know yeah having said that how does it feel to travel this far after being locked down for a couple of years with an album almost ready to go is it just plain excitement are you treading closer to maybe a dash of panic and vulnerability I'll tell you the truth. We've been playing a lot, you know. We yeah. are very uh, agile setup, and I think a lot of bands they, you know, they need to bring crews and trucks and sound engineers and do tours and do a lot of planning. And I think our band, we, you know, people call and we come, and somehow in a very uh, wild west kind of vibe, we've been touring all the way through the pandemic and uh, we all got the corona and some gigs got cancelled and some gigs got moves and sometimes the police came and you couldn't play in the venue and you went and you played in a house instead so to be honest we've been touring a lot but having said that um our agent from uh, from um, from um, southern america he has been waiting because that has been closed country for us for a long time during the yeah. pandemic. Yes, he was it like has. building a tour for us and we we're like, yeah, it's going to be fun. And then it fucked up and then he made a new, some new dates and it fucked up. And now finally it's all happening. We had a small Brazil tour, which was also amazing. And we met Nico, our guy, and it was a big success. And he said, this is Argentinian job. And it's like a big one and it's going to be a lot of fun. So he's been hyping it a lot. So my yeah. expectations are super high, to be honest. It, it's it's a big scene. It's really a big scene. Now that we've talked expectations, I'd like to give you props because you've got a seventh album on its way. I, li I like props. Let's do this. <laughs> I mean, le let's recap. The first single was in November. You're touring South America by mid-February. As outside observers, we could confidently say perhaps it's almost ready. Like a little bit of polish and mastering, and it's maybe done. However, you've been deliberately vague about release dates, even on press releases. Is that about creative control? Is it just about not being in a rush? Is that a statement about sticking to LPs and concept work? Or none of the above, perhaps? Should I be honest again? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I have the great luxury of um, of just writing songs, sing the songs, record them with my lovely band, and do concerts. And sometimes interviews with nice guys like you. But all the planning, I, I, I totally leave it up to the guys, you know. 
to yeah. management to record labels and uh, sometimes we ourselves make a deadline and we decide this is when it's going to come out but of course the music always have to come first and um, we finished the mastering like over Christmas and I'm super super excited about the album I think it's really good and of course I guess we always say that when we release but I think this is one of three who made who releases ever closest to my heart personally mm -hmm. so I think it's worth the wait when it comes out and how it, it doesn't matter much to me to be honest what matters to me is to make the music and feel the connection through messages and Spotify and you know numbers and then mostly to to have the honor to come and play for people and see how the music connects and uh, just again and again realizing that you never know you know you make a song and you think this is a this is the best song I ever made and then you come and you play it and people are like yeah that's nice and then you make another track <laughs> and you go out to the club and it fucking explodes between our hands and you never yeah. know. And uh, so, you know, we didn't release the album yet, so we don't play a lot of the songs from the album. But um, mm -hmm. I, have, I think we already released some great stuff for yeah. the release dates. You did. These kind of plans. I have the luxury of not caring too much about that shit. Yeah, I, I think I that's good. Write we, my we songs can... and then go into the woods and sit by the bonfire and talk to you. <laughs> In Scandinavia. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Mermaids, Summer and Silence and Secrets, all extremely popular singles and really good releases. Check out the as moon, you by said. the way. Can you see the moon? Can you see the moon? Yeah, it, it's right behind you. <laughs> that, it, it looks huge. My friends, Woo. say hi. Hi. Hey, guys. <laughs> Then we, we have uh, Adriatic's remix of Silence and Secrets, DJ Tenny's yeah. remix of Mermaids, and Frank Wiedmann's kind of a longtime collaborator, producer. Yeah. His own interpretation of Silence and Secrets. Is that part, I, I believe so, that's part of your decision? Like, make. Yeah, yeah the creative also, stuff is those our decisions. Songs and more open, tempered with, played with. We always uh, were this kind of band that was very open to collaborations and, uh, you know, just uh, leaving things up to, not coincidence, but the spur of the moment, you know, calling yeah. people who we admire and uh, then we try and work with them and sometimes the chemistry is just right. And then we do stuff and stuff happens and I, I love the chaos of who made who and the, the process. And I think beautiful things happen, and I think Frank Wiedemann is a great collaborator. I think uh, Krampe, who we did some stuff with, is also, in a totally other way, also amazing. And um, still, I would also love to um, put into the conversation that I still really, after many years with these two assholes, Jeppe Kelfer and Thomas Barfod, <laughs> I still love the guys, and I still admire their musicality and creativity very much. And whenever... I go on a stage with them, one of them, two of them, whatever. It's almost every time a big pleasure and, you know, unexpected <coughs> stuff happens. There's a lot of smoke here now. You, I mean, even though you have bangers, these snippets of the experience that you're cooking, you've let us hear, sounds maybe less clubby, wider. Is that deliberate or is it like a, a sign of being together through the pandemic and making an album and touring fast and going places? So you say the new album is less clubby? I mean, I haven't heard the whole album, but the releases are like more, they feel wider, more, more introspective, perhaps. They still slap. I, I'm not saying they're not like ravey clubby but they sound perhaps more introspective i don't know how to put it yeah, into words. maybe i think you know it's always a evolution and you go through you think this is a great idea and then you realize no it's a bad idea and you go this way and you kind of zigzag your way 
through the whole thing. And I, for this time, I think for one, for one thing, we didn't think about radio at all. It was like, sorry, you're a radio, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> commercial shit radio, like bad pop music. Yeah. Sometimes I've been sitting with my microphone thinking, oh, we need to make a huge chorus that works on radio. Yeah. We didn't do that at all. Mm -hmm. And it's that's that made it more easy for us. So I think for me, I'm when I'm doing the stuff, I'm basically just picturing me standing with the guy in a very cool club or maybe I know it sounds corny, but I often imagine myself standing on the on Burning Man on top of the Mayan warrior bus raving in the middle of the night and, and what would connect us to the dancing crowd in the mo in the best way. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of my gasoline and my, my inspiration, you know. And well, you, you try to find somewhere in between that connection and uh, something that where your own emotions are also in sync with that. Yeah. I guess. And again, and again, you know, it's personally also take the luxury of following my heart and my ideas. And then is it clubby? Is it not clubby? Does it sound like pa pandemic? <laughs> I, I don't I don't need to worry about that shit, you know. I can yeah. just basically do what I feel is right for me and right for the communication and the connection with the people listening to our music and coming to our shows. And Again, I have a very good feeling about this album and the whole thing we're doing now. It connects super well and it, the tracks we did on the album translates really well to our live shows. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy. I'm glad. I, 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 can, I can see where you're coming from, like talking about commercial radio and perhaps a more, I don't know, American view of media and... Uh, Spotify playlists and listening experiences and algorithm friendly tracks that yeah, always yeah, takes away from and, creativity. And it shouldn't be more than three minutes and uh, yeah, yeah. You need to auto tune the hell out of it and blah blah blah. And know. at least 30 seconds of intro because one listen. I, I think that takes away from the creative experience. Like that. I think so. That's too. the essence of your work. That's what makes it who made who. So I'm glad that you like are not in, in that rat race of I had to get into it through your creativity and through being honest and expressing yourselves. I, I think that that is what people find genuine and I and hope connect so. with you. Yeah, and at least that's what makes it work for us. And then the, I guess It's like when you're on a plane, they always say you need to put on your own uh, gas mask before helping others. Yeah. I think it's the same in this. If you don't connect to it yourself, you can't connect to anyone, right? And imagine if you did. Imagine if you did songs that connected and you hated yourself. What a nightmare, right? Yeah, that would absolutely awful. I, I, I get what you're saying, yeah. Uh, I, I was looking through... Uh, the the sites where you get the tickets and so and ev ev everyone even producers and managers and whatever were saying like you are the top act like people are actively Ooh. asking to see you live here in argentina right right nice. now what an honor so ha having those bangers put recently out and having an album on the way i think that would be a good like a good package you know people coming together I'm looking forward. To it. So. I'm looking forward to see you live. Thank you. Me too. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And, let's and th let's end this session with the uh, camera zooming into the bonfire. Yeah, absolutely. Like a true I, fucking I, Scandinavian. Nice I, meeting you. It was really nice talking I'll, to you. I'll see you. Nice to talk to you too. Take Have care, a good man. one. Enjoy yourself. And. If you look at our YouTube, if you look at the videos, I actually have a recording of the track Summer made acoustically by this bonfire like six months ago when it was summer for the nerds. Bye.